Jeremiah found the Pastor Callum here again with Reverend Crawl and Sister Carter as we are getting ready to engage in our Sunday school lesson for July 19th of uh, the Wisdom of Jesus. Uh, we're just grateful and thankful again to have these two wonderful women of God with us. Amen. As we share in our lesson and we pray that you will get fruitful engagement as we engage uh, in our lesson for the day. Our leader for the day is the Reverend Catherine Cross. So Reverend Cross is in your hands. Amen. Good morning once again. Today is July 19th and our Bible study guide is 7. And the theme is the wisdom of Jesus. And our Bible background will be coming from Mark 6. 1 through 6. Mm -hmm. 7 1 through 23. And our printed text will be coming from Mark 6, 1 through 6. And our devotional reading will be coming from Mark 7, 14 through 23. And the aim for change is by the end of the lesson, we will identify the reasons or reasons the people in Nazareth could not accept the wisdom of Jesus. Repent of our occasions when Jesus' words made us feel offended mm -hmm. instead of accepting them as wisdom mm -hmm. and commit to accepting the word of Jesus even when they challenges us. Amen. Sister God. Amen. The in focus uh, for today. Hassan gathered his things. He thanked Mrs. Jenkins for her time and got up to leave. She walked with him to the door and said, Be sure to tell your mama we're praying for her. See you on Sunday at church. As he walked down the steps toward his car, the same wondered if Mrs. Jenkins had heard a word he said. He was volunteering as a community organizer trying to encourage people to vote. Mrs. Jenkins was on the board of trustees of the biggest church in the territory, and she hoped she would he hoped she would see her way clear to having a meeting there. Her saying was as personable and as charming as he knew how to be. But Mrs. Jenkins, he knew, always looked down on his family. They were considered outsiders. They were renters, not homeowners. And his parents hadn't gone to the same high school as the longtime neighborhood fixtures. People wouldn't see him. People wouldn't see him as anything other than Foster Edwards boy. His years away at college and abroad and his work to show people how to get the most out of their government service didn't count with them. His saying uh, sat behind the stern wheel of his car and sighed. He offered a quick prayer that he might find a more open heart and listening ear before the next appointment. Uh, the question for our um, concern is, even if people can't see you for who you have become, mm, God knows what is in your heart, Jesus. And do we understand that it's more important to please him than to please others? Ooh, that's good. That's a good question. Yes. Uh, uh, this is that's that, that's your that's that's your question. But I just like to comment on. We see it all the time when people look back over how you came up. Or right. What you used to be, right. you were the poor family, you were not equal to some of the other upper crust families and whatnot. And there are some people that look down on you forever for that. Mm -hmm. Now this young man, yes, he grew up poor. They were renters. Uh, they didn't go to the, so his parents didn't go to the high school. These, you know, people that we call them high society I, I people, mean, yeah, kind of, the didn't go, yes, <laughs> yes, but this young man had made his way up through, you know, his, 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 his uh, society, he had gone away to college, uh, got a good education, came back and got a good job in the community, That's it was right. a community
community organizer. Mm. Now he's depending on this lady that had status all the time. She's in a position to help. Mm. But he gets the feeling she's looking down. And we know people do that. That's it's right. a sad situation. Right. Look at you for what you used to be and not what God has blessed you to become. That's and right. to say if you ever get caught in this situation, be not discouraged mm. because if they don't recognize you, God knows. Amen. And he will, God will make a way for you to get done what he has for you to do. Amen. Yeah. And I, I think that's good because he sort of says he feels like the outsider. Mm -hmm. And how do we get in? We need someone to vouch for us. And he goes to somebody that he feels would vouch for him. But his, his, the way he feels mm -hmm. is that, man, they won't she's not even looking at me she's not even seeing the journey that i've had um and i, I think we, we we sometimes will feel that way um like you said disappointed uh even when they don't see what you've become um but god knows what's in your heart okay. and, and i think that's what the key is when you realize that god knows what's in the, in your heart he'll send the right people at the right yes. time to change that situation. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Yes. And uh, the last, I, I would like to add on too with that. It says, um, even when people can't see you for who you have become, mm -hmm. God knows what is in your heart. And it says, do we understand that it is more important to please Him than to please others? Mm -hmm. And that can become where he said that you can't be a people pleaser. That's it. And please me. It says you can't serve God and always be a people pleaser. It says uh, to please God and do all things for that glorify of God. See, because when we are working to please others, people's in the moment so as to gain favor. And it says pleasing is a virgin of adultery because it values others' God. Mm -hmm. guys, so you can't be a people pleaser and please God. You're always going to have someone that uh, uh, looks at you different, Look down you know. Page. And 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 it is so important that the best way to be is to be ourselves, be what God has called us mm -hmm. to be. And That's it doesn't right. matter how the outside looks at us. God knows. God me. knows. Exactly. knows our heart. God knows our heart. God knows. And it does not matter what the world think of us, mm -hmm. you know. And you. you on that on your sermon on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. going back to the wisdom. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I keep in mind verse. Yeah. I keep in mind verses. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which given unto him. They and they were offended I at did. him. I Same did. kind of situation with Jesus. That's right. Yes. It was Everyone offended. we've experienced, Jesus, Jesus experienced it. Too. Amen. Yes. So, so why complain? Amen. Amen. And the focal verses? Mm -hmm. The focal verses. Okay. Focal verses. We're looking at the New Living Translation, Mark chapter 6. Verse number one, Jesus left that part of the country and returned to his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? Then they scoff. He's just a carpenter. The son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, and Judas, and Simeon, and his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own town, in his own hometown, and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hand on a few sick people and heal them. And 
and he was amazed at their unbelief. Then Jesus went from village to village, teaching the people. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Amen. The Amen. Pe people's place and times of Nazareth. The name of this city, it means branch. Mm -hmm. Nazareth only gained prominence after the life of Jesus, located in Lower Galilee. Right. It lies halfway between the Sea of Galilee and the Mediterranean Sea. In Jesus' days, Nazareth was a small village having only one spring to supply fresh water to residents. Today, that spring is known as Mary's Well. Mm. Nazareth did not have a good reputation in Jesus' days, as reflected in Nathaniel's questions. Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Mm. John 1 through 46, Jesus was rejected by his home town peoples and was thrown out of the synagogue. There are Luke 4, 16, 30, Matthew 13, 54, 58, Mark 6, 1 through 6. And the early churches was also looked upon with disdain, being referred to as a sect of the Nazarenes. And the Acts 14, 24, 5, modern Nazareth has about 20,000 residents, and most of whom are Muslims and Christians. In the background is Mark, the shortest of the gospel, it emphasizes Jesus' actions more than his teaching, recording 18 of his miracles, but only one major sermon and four parables. He does not present a biography of Jesus detailing his Jewish family history. In fact, Mark does not quote the Old Testament reference Jewish cultures extensively, leading scholars to believe that he wrote primarily so that Gentiles, Christians, would know Jesus as a son of man and savior king who conquers everything from storms to demons to death. Mark 5 begins with Jesus and his disciples arriving on the east side of the Sea of Galilee in the range of Gerasenes and immediately begin met by a man possessed with many demons. Mm -hmm. This demon possessed man kneeled in his presence. The demons within his recognized Jesus and begged him to be merciful. Jesus cast the demons out of the man and sent them into a herd of 2,000 pigs that drowned themselves. Those who witnessed the deliverance and heard about it from the man as he shared his story throughout Decapolis, Decapolis. Decapolis. marveled at Jesus' power. And after crossing back over to the other side, Jairus, a leader of the synagogue, confronted Jesus, fell to Jesus' feet. Jairus asked that he would heal his daughter, who was on the brink of death. On the way to heal the girl, a woman who had been suffering from bleeding for 12 years and desperation thought, If I could touch his garments, I will be made well. She touched him and was healed. And when Jesus asked who touched him, she fell to her knees and confessed that it was she. Before Jesus and his disciples could get to Jairus' daughter, she died. Jesus reassured those present that the girl was only sleep. Many mocked him, unmoved. Jesus took her parents, Peter, James, and John, inside. There he resurrected her. These are the events directly leading up to Mark 6, 1 through 6. What commonalities are found in these three accounts from Mark 5? Well, that's good. good stuff. That's good. <laughs> good stuff. It's a lot of stuff. Lot that's of good. good stuff. Yes. The commonalities, though. Yeah, that's good. The commonalities. If we notice Mark, we said Mark is the shortest uh, of all the Gospels. Uh -huh. We notice that. He didn't talk a lot about the Old Testament. He didn't talk a lot, a lot about Jesus, uh, what's a biography, Bi you know, right, right, said right, right. He, he didn't talk about that. Mark liked talking about Jesus in action. So that's right. That's things true. that that's he true. was doing right. as opposed to things that he was saying. Right, things that right. he was saying matter, but things that he was doing. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at uh, the, some of the things that he's doing, right. some of the miracles that the miracles. he's doing. 
Good. Mark like action. Uh -huh. <laughs> and what he wanted to, in here, these commonalities, we notice there are the miracles that stand out that's talked about in this background here mm -hmm. is he cast those demons mm -hmm. out, right. went into the pigs, and the pigs mm -hmm. went into the, to the sea. See. Uh, the other one was Jairus' daughter, daughter uh -huh. died before he got there, but he went and he brought, brought her back. Mm -hmm. And the woman that had spent all of her money mm -hmm. with the tw mm -hmm. 12 years with, yeah. with the issue yeah. of blood, right. those were three actions mm -hmm. that... Uh, he talks about uh, that's coming up, that's coming right up to this lesson. Mm -hmm. Right, smart. That's how that's how he he talked about it. So the common uh, commonalities uh -huh. we see in that we're talking about today are those three mirrors, uh -huh. and there might be some other things, but yeah. I see that those three mirrors. Yes. Let's see what that, what's, yeah. see what what's, watch what Jesus can. Okay, this is what Jesus did. Yes. Yes. Right. I, and I would like to add to another commonality that you see in those three is that uh, Jesus had power over physical situations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. over physical, uh, over the, 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 he had power over physical situations where it was the, the possession of the man, the woman's mm -hmm. issue, mm -hmm. and the child's sickness and mm -hmm. death. Uh -huh. He had power over the physical, but then he also displayed power in the spiritual. Uh -huh. So the spiritual was casting out the demons. The right. spiritual was the woman's faith uh -huh. saying, if I touch the hem of his God, his Jesus said, virtue has went out. Yes. So yes. you touch me. Yes. You know, we sing that song, I touched him. <laughs> <laughs> so he got, got that touch uh -huh. and then and and then Jarius also when when they were crying, uh, he 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 uh, and, and well, Jesus does, brings the the daughter back to life, the spiritual part of her, because there's one more other commonality: faith, faith. Oh yeah, faith. Uh, with the with the that woman, didn't she have? She faith. had some faith. But I so here's another though: the the, the man in the tomb. Yes. Many times we don't look at him as having faith. Wow. He was amongst dead people. But when the demons came out of him, he wanted to follow Jesus. Absolutely, he did. He wanted to go. Jesus he said, did. "No, this is Jesus authorized him to go tell him. You right. go tell him. Yeah. yeah, you always remember yes. Jesus. Now I, I want you to see something in this. When Jesus was with the Jews and he would heal somebody, he would say, "Don't say nothing. Right? Don't tell nobody. Right. Right. But when right. he got with the Gentiles." And that's why Mark writing to the Gentile, he tells that man, go tell it. Right. Right. Go tell it on the mouth. Spread it. Spread oh, it. Mm -hmm. right. Go Spread tell it. it. The actions. It yeah. And then you, you got the action of faith. Yes. You know, the woman with the faith reaching out. Jerry's faith. Mm -hmm. Jerry's man. He, he, okay, Jesus, I know you can heal if she alive. Mm -hmm. But what you going to do now that she dead? Yeah, right. Right. Mm -hmm. He, and he said, yeah. Lord, help my unbelief. Right. So we got some good commonalities in good this. Good commonalities. Yes, yes, yes. And as we as he go back home to Nazareth, we're gonna be keeping in mind all of what he's done and what they had to say. Amen. <laughs> um, the at a glance is there's two the first at a glance is a people offended, Mark six, one through three. Uh -huh. And the second outline is a prophet dishonored in verses four through six. Okay. Someone read the in depth, the first in depth. Okay, I'll read. Upon healing Jairus' daughter, number one, a people offended, Mark six, one through three. Uh -huh. Upon healing Jairus' daughter, Jesus and his disciples traveled about 20 miles southwest back to Nazareth. The area where he grew up on the Sabbath, Jesus did as he would have for years living in the area. He went to the synagogue. However, instead of sitting to learn with others from the community, he returned on the second trip back to Nazareth as a teacher, a rabbi, traveling with his students. Jews were used to educated rabbis speaking with wisdom and authority but Jesus amazed them 
Their amazement did not lead to honor and respect. However, instead, they were skeptical and offended. They questioned him, stumbling over the fact that someone so common and familiar to them could teach with such power. There was disbelief that a mere carpenter could be so wise and perform miracles, implying that such gifts could not come from God and thus must be from Satan. <laughs> they insulted his heritage, calling him Mary's son, mm -hmm. instead of following the traditions of identifying children by their father. Finally, they pointed out that his family was no more special than their own. His four brothers and at least two sisters lived among them. It is worthy noting, although his brothers did not believe in him before the crucifixion, John 75, James would go on to become a leader in the church and author the book of James. And Jude would write the New Testament book titled after him. Have you ever encountered a situation where people most familiar with someone are the most unsupportive of that person? Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, Reverend Crawl, go ahead. Lead, lead us in this. Talk to us. Well, thank you. And um, have I ever encountered a situation where people are most familiar with someone are the most unsupportive of that person. Yes, I've experienced it. I've you know, encountered it many of times, but in Jesus' days, it was uh, on the, uh, the seventh day that he would go into the to the synagogue. Uh -huh. And that, that it was a, a habit that he had formed back when he was in his childhood. Right. He grew up in that town. Uh -huh. And uh, the worship and the rules of the synagogue they were familiar with his worship and all of that, you know, with him. But in, in verse 3, it says, Then they scoff, he's just a carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and John, and his sister, reading from the NLT version, mm -hmm. live right here among us. They were deeply offended, refused to believe in him. Why does he parade himself as a rabbi and a miracle worker? Mm -hmm. You know, but with such knowledge and uh, familiarity of his background, so the people, they became offended of him. And sometimes people will come of, offended of, of others due to um, their knowledge, the wisdom, mm -hmm. um, even the calling of their life, you know. Mm -hmm. And most definitely when, when you uh, attempt to correct someone in the right way, they can become offended mm -hmm. as well. But in, in this case, it was um, where... Uh, what they wanted to bring up his background, mm -hmm. his upgrade him with the meanness, the meanness of his re relationship and his upbringing. Okay. So now they were astonished. They were astonished mm -hmm. in his doctrines. Mm -hmm. They are offended at his at him mm -hmm. of his knowledge of things that he knows. Mm -hmm. But there was the prejudice was against him. They took at him with the contempt, and for that reason. They reject God's teaching. Mm, good, 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 good. That's Amen. good. That's good. But you, Sister Carla, what do you feel on this one? Uh, you know, there is a lot in those few verses there because in the lesson text, Jesus made his final attempt to go back home. He had been to Nazareth before. Uh, just be, sometime before that, mm -hmm. and they rejected him then. Mm -hmm. But it's like he's giving his hometown people another chance to take a different look at him and realize and accept who he is. Mm. So this time he goes back, but it's the same thing. It's like, that's Joseph. He didn't even say Joseph. Mm. They say it was insulting. They said, it's that's isn't that Mary's, Mary's boy? Right. Mm -hmm. And he, he grew up here. And you know, like we'll say sometimes about somebody that's doing something, mm -hmm. who do they think they are? They right. know better than we are. Yes. Yes. You know, we all grew up in the same neighborhood here. We all grew up together. Uh -huh. Now, who do we think he is? Right. But what was so astonishing about it, 
he proved that he was something different than the rest of them because he spoke and he spoke with power and authority. His teaching was astounding. Mm, So you can understand that maybe they had mixed emotions and he grew up here with us, but uh, we can't. We don't know what he knows, so they puzzle, they astound, and they insult him because Mm -hmm. Jesus stands out and he's proving to them that he's who he is. Mm -hmm. But because of that, they're so offended about it and Uh say, you're nobody else. You grew up over there. You little carpenter. You don't know anything. You haven't been anywhere. You haven't learned anything. Uh So how can you... You know, be so powerful and right. tell us so much, but then it was there. They couldn't, they couldn't deny that they Jesus was there, they but they they rejected. They rejected. They rejected. It was all because of his uh, profound teaching. It was, it was, it was his was profound teaching. And, and, and I, you know, I, I want to push it a little bit further than just the profound teaching. They couldn't get beyond knowing. Who Jesus was instead of recognizing who Jesus is. They knew. Mm-hmm. Y'all see that? He, they knew who Jesus was, but they couldn't recognize who Jesus is. They looked at his past. Absolutely. They and they couldn't Absolutely. look at him in the present. Absolutely. And that's why they couldn't receive Absolutely. his teaching. Uh, when we talk about uh, people that know us, and, and, and I, I always look at this when we think about family sometimes. Family know us, and we grew up together. We grew uh-huh. up in the same house. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 we, we grew up in the same family. So uh, I, I remember when I started preaching. Oh, now you call yourself a preacher. Yeah, yeah, God called me to be a preacher. Uh-huh. But we know you We know you from the project. We know yeah, you from yeah. the neighborhood. We, we, know you, we know you as Boudreaux's son. We uh-huh. know you as Jesus, son. Not, but, but do you know who I am? am? Yes. Who I have become? Who I have? Right yeah. Who yes. I have? It become. was like the in focus. Excuse me. It was like the in focus. Yeah. The woman they did knew who he was, mm-hmm. but couldn't accept what he had and become. That's, that's, mm-hmm. that's today. Yeah. They they knew they knew his stock. Mm-hmm. They knew his tree. They knew his people. But they didn't want to get a chance to know who Jesus was. And something interesting, too, about this, they called him the carpenter's son, which yeah, sort of shows something else that we don't see a lot of. Because remember, we've been studying the boyhood life of Jesus, and now we're jumping to him in ministry. So last lesson we dealt with, Jesus was a little boy in the temple lost, 12 years, 12 old. years old. Well, he went home, and when we left him there, it says that he was obedient to his his family, his right. mother and his father Joseph. So now we even see that he, the people looking at him as Joseph's apprentice, calling him the carpenter's son. Right, with less and, education. Uh, 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 he worked with his hand. Right, and this was thirty years now. Right, this is later. Right, it's thirty it, thirty years. <laughs> yeah. But they, you know, they looked, they reject him because of his teaching. Mm-hmm. That was the main thing because of teaching. And a lot of times we we will look at people's background, mm-hmm. you know, and we want to judge, mm-hmm. you know. Right. And like they mentioned right. about, you know, uh, a carpenter. They had laid for carpenter. They was pretty much selling the carpenter. They were like pretty much dumbfounded, mm-hmm. you know, lesser education. You know, right. they was a, like right. a nobody. But that's why you have to be careful because, you know, you look at a person as a nobody. But I like mm-hmm. I like, like Jeremiah, mm-hmm. like Jeremiah, book of Jeremiah. You know, when he preached, he felt like that. Uh, well, no one received him. Mm-hmm. And to him, well, he was a nobody. But in the eyesight of God, he was all that and then some more. Mm-hmm. You know, good, so good. we should be careful. But it was because of his rejection. Anytime you want to uh, uh, teach someone right, there's always going to be some rejection. Reject. And, uh, and a lot of times, people are the way they are because they choose to be that way. That's they, true. Can, they can know that this is the great man. This man performed miracles. We can see it. But they still, their heart is so hard. Well, they still don't want to, you know, accept it. But that goes back to you can't be a people pleaser. Mm-hmm. You have to. Uh, 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 continue to do what what keep God pleased. Mm-hmm. You know you can't serve two masters. Sure can. No man. You know, but it's, no man. we can become laborless because of who God say we are. I, I, and I would say I would push is this again. They were unsupportive. No, 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 most oh, definitely. Unsupportive. And I think that 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 if anyone who should have received. 
received the miracles of Jesus, man, it should have been <laughs> Nazareth. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he mm -hmm. came, but he not only came once, he came twice. twice. He, this is his, this is, he came back to, right. to help them. It, so it's, I think sometimes it's hard for people who are familiar with you to receive what God gives through you. I change. <laughs> yeah. Receive what God gives through you. Amen. Because, Amen. But, okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go on. If you look then at Jesus, yeah. you know, they rejected him. They mm -hmm. knew what he could do. Yes. And he was there to uh, heal and, you know, take do the same kinds of miracles he had done in other places. Mm -hmm. They they rejected that. But notice Jesus did not force. He didn't try to beat them over the head and That's say, right. You, Amen. you know me, you are my people, right. we're up together, you know what I can do and you know I can help you. He did not force his way on them. That's right. He, when they rejected him and were offended by him, what did he do? He went on mm -hmm. around doing those who would accept him Absolutely. and those who would allow him That's to lay right. hands right. and do something for him. He just went ahead and took care of those people. So That's right. That's you have a choice. If you reject Jesus, he's not going to break in. That, oh, come on. He's not, not going to break in and Amen. do anything for you. That's right. He will That's accept good. you mm. when you accept him. Or he'll do for you, I should say, when you accept him. And this is what's going on. Jesus said, well, you reject me. And he even told us when he sent his disciples out two by two. He That's told right. them to do the same, same thing. thing. Yeah. So if the door don't receive you, go. Or turn around and walk Shake what is what? Shake the dust and shake the dust. And go. Oh, that's right. So we are the ones, whoever reject Jesus, we are the ones who lose out. That's right. That's good. So that's what that's happens. Good. Yes, absolutely. That's what that's what that's we're making it harder for ourselves when we mm -hmm. reject Don't reject that's Jesus. Right. You know, the peoples with their hostile and their negative attitudes to, toward Jesus. Amen. Nothing else. We go to our second outline. Okay. <laughs> Uh, number two, a prophet dishonor, verses four through six. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown, among his relatives and his own family. Simply reflecting on the events immediately prior to this visit proves the accuracy of this statement. A woman had faith that she would be healed if she could just touch his clothes. A leader in a synagogue had faith that his daughter would be healed if Jesus touched her. A man with many demons worshipped him, and even demons recognized his authority. Yet in his own hometown, among his own people, Jesus only found a few willing to have enough faith to even come to him for healing. His inability to work was not because he was limited in power, but because he performed miracles in the presence of faith. There was such a void that even he was astonished by their lack of faith. Sadly, this was a foreshadowing of how others would respond to him in the future. This experience also served as a teaching moment for the disciples who witnessed all of these events. This occurred prior to his commissioning of the twelve to go out two by two to teach and perform miracles. His instructions was if any place willing not any place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet. And when you leave as a testimony against them, he modeled what he taught, even though it was a verdict against his own people. Why is it sometimes difficult to accept godly wisdom from people we know well? Amen. That's good. Yes. Amen. That's good. Okay. Woo! Jump on it. We can sit in this. The teacher. Uh, <laughs> again, I, I want to push back to that familiarity. And I think you said something important, Sister Carter um, and Reverend Croft, when you said people got to receive it. Jesus said in Revelation, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Got to receive it. 
If you open up, I'll come in with you and sup with you at you with me. In other words, it has to be an open door, an open heart, an open mind yes. to receive That's right. what Jesus is offering and what he's giving. And I think it's difficult for people to accept godly wisdom from people we know well is because we know their story. We know their background. We know their issues. How can Jesus do something for me? That's the carpenter's son. He, he the one that hit, hit my boy in the head with a baseball bat. I, I, and not that Jesus hit, but they I know. know. I know. They know the story. They know. 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 They know him growing up. They know they, they, that was the time that nurtured Jesus to be who he was as a man. So they're still looking at Jesus through the flesh mm -hmm. instead of seeing Jesus in the spirit yes. and who he is now. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And does it seem like Jesus might be, it says a prophet dishonored. Jesus is the one, the people were offended. But Jesus was dis dishonored because he deserved honor. Mm -hmm. yes. But they dishonored him. Mm -hmm. So in that fourth verse, Jesus acknowledges their unbelief. Uh, he dishonors, you know, his, their rejection of him uh, by saying that he mm -hmm. recognized, he knew exactly what they were doing. When they were dishonoring him, mm -hmm. disrecognizing him disrespecting him, showing no reverence for him, no devotion for him. So what they were really saying, I think, is they were saying, well, he's he's not worthy, mm -hmm. even though they knew of the miracles. They knew what yeah. he could do. It was just, and it comes back to the words you use, it was just rejection. We just don't reject all that. Right. I mean, they could see it was true, mm -hmm. but people reject the truth. We can see that they reject the truth. So they were saying that Jesus was not worthy of their faith. Having them, having them having faith. Right, right, right. Not worthy of their honor. Mm. And it just was because of uh, it says in you know in some of the reading it says their unbelief. Mm -hmm. But maybe it was a little more than unbelief. It was Eat, refuse, just, just rejection, refusal to believe. Because when you see something with your own eyes, it's kind of hard to say. I don't believe he can do that. Right. Yes, he did. He did. He just, he just, he, he just, just did it. Did it. Right. You just with your stubborn heart, you just dishonoring it and re rejecting it. Right. And Jesus was amazed at that because yes, you know he was, he was Jesus was Jesus was good. Jesus was obedient. <laughs> oh, uh, like you said, we talked about him as, as a little boy when yeah. when his, when he said he was about to be about his father's business. His parents took him back home, and he was just so obedient. He went right on back and grew up and did was obedient and did what he was did what he was supposed to do. I, and, and, and you know what? Because now that we, we, we were sort of saying that, and he grew in stature he and grew favor and faith. with man. So he grew in stature and favor in that town. Right. In the so town. They knew. And they knew. But the town will turn. Come on. On you. A point. Because it's something about. You're supposed to be proud of your home for folks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But it's something about home folks. They don't want you to get much further than they are. Mm. It's kind of like we home folks now. We got to stay. If, mm. if I'm going to stay poor, you got to stay poor. We all stay poor. With me. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll be satisfied. So that's good, Sister it, John. <laughs> it was just, like I said, the rejection, not accepting what he had become, and not going to follow that. That's true. Yeah, that's, that's, that, was, that was pretty much the bottom. That was pretty much the bottom line. Uh -huh. Unbelief will never receive. Right. Never received. That's, that's good. That's yes, good. Jesus said. He said Jesus was amazed that mm -hmm. their unbelief and, and how they were acting. I guess uh, Jesus said he came the first time they rejected him. 
Now he'll go and perform more great miracles, and then I'll come back. Really? Because he really wanted them to receive right, that. Right, right, right. But it says that this really kind of speaks as Israel as a whole, mm. showing that the Jews truly did reject, reject Jesus, whereas yeah. the Gentiles... You, 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 you just said something that sparked something in me. And it's interesting because it ain't all Jews. Not all. Mm -hmm. Because Jarius is a synagogue leader. He's a ruler. He's over synagogue. Some He's Jewish. So it, it, it really speaks to that particular location mm -hmm. of how they did not want to receive him. Jesus. Um, and it really speaks even to today when we look at when a heart is hard. Mm -hmm. And I, I was, when you were saying, well, what is it? Is it that they just didn't believe? I think you got some jealousy That's in there. Right. You got right. some envy in there. Oh, yes. You oh, got, yes. Yes. You know, yes. Uh, you got some you got some things that are in there that are like you said that sort of that crab in the barrel uh, mentality I don't want you to get out because I can't get out mm -hmm. you know and so sometimes I got to pull you down I got to make you feel less than so that you can't be all that God has called you to be and that's when they allow the jealousy to come in uh -huh. yes yeah. yeah but for the mission that God has given you mm. God. It's your mission. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's, 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 that's your mission, that's regardless of who reject you or whatever somebody might have to say about you. Go on with your mission. Mm -hmm. Go on with your mission. You know that's it. That's yes. It. yes. Good lesson. Good lesson. Good lesson. I like to read the uh, liberating the lesson. Oh yeah, uh, because that, that it gives helps us. us a it's very helpful. It says uh, it is tempting to read Mark six and one through six and judge the actions of those in Jesus' hometown. How can they reject the Savior, having heard of his miracles and witnessed his wisdom and teaching? How could they be so offended by Jesus that they would not even go to him? In reality, we have a tendency to do the same. same we have access to God's word. We read it, yet we can get offended when his word convicts our hearts and reveals our sin. Because, but because we realize that we should not be offended by the message, his word, we sometimes uh, lash out at the messenger, the pastor who preaches a convicting message, the spouse who lovingly confronts, the friend who challenges or holds us accountable. We may not ask aloud, who do you think you are? But our actions reveal our attitude. We stop praying and stop seeking him. As a result, our faith falters and we neglect our relationship with the Lord. Mark reveals that in the end, we are the ones who suffer. We would do well to remember the line from the old hymn, What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. When I read Amen. that, when I read that pastor, I thought about you as this pastor song. You know it. 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 Yes, that's a good one. Yes, indeed. that's a good one. But I think this is so true. So as we look at uh, Nazareth, and as Philip says, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Uh, we ought to ask ourselves, is there some Nazareth in us? Mm. That we got some Nazareth in us. And so it, it makes us really look at it and say, God, work on me. God, fix me. Oh, yes. God, yes. help me. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Good lesson. Good lesson. Good lesson. But Jeremiah, Pastor, any other any other thoughts? Any other questions? Any? No. Oh, amen. But, but Jeremiah family, hey, I pray that you've been blessed by our lesson today. I pray that this will engage you and make you uh, not only see Nazareth, but look at the man in the mirror and yes, ask so. that question: Is this a Nazareth oh, in me? Yeah. And amen. Lord, eradicate it, clean me, fix me. I want to be right. I want to yes. be saved. Yes. And I want to be whole. God Amen. bless you Amen. in Jesus' name.